the sentence logic. And they're fairly easy to build, but you will need to either have in your memory or in front of you the truth table definitions of each of the truth functions because you will need them when you build truth tables. There are different ways to build truth tables. The notation can vary. Um, so my way isn't the only way. At any rate, suppose you have some some width, and you want to build a truth table for this width. The first thing you need to do, and here we'll simply use atomic sentences rather than variables in writing these widths. The first thing you do is count the number of different distinct atomic sentences in the width. How many different atomic sentences are in this width? Who says two? Who says three? Who says four? Okay, the correct answer is two. This A is not different from this A. That's to say, they're the same atomic sentence. They are different pieces of ink on the board. In that way, they're different. But when an atomic sentence gets repeated, that does not make it a different atomic sentence. It's the same atomic sentence. So you only have two. And since you have two truth values, there are four different ways of assigning truth values to these two atomic sentences. And there's an easy formula to compute how many rows for any number of atomic sentences you would need, and that's two to the n where n is the number of different atomic sentences in the width. Since there are just two, two squared is four, four rows. And you will now need to assign those two truth values in the four possible combinations to those two sentences. And whatever you put under this column, whatever truth values you put under this column, the exact same set of truth values must occur under every recurrence of A. So the first, second step in building a truth table is to assign truth values to each of the atomic sentences. So that's what will go under every occurrence of A. And this will go under every occurrence of B. And how do we know that this is a unique and an exhaustive assignment of two truth values to two sentences, it's easy to convince yourself, given two truth values, they're either both true, the first is true or the second false, the first false or the second true, or they're both false. And each row is different. 
the truth values in each row differ. And there's no other possible way of assigning two truth values to two sentences. So it's easy. When you have more than two, there is a method, but you will not need it because I do not have you build <coughs> truth tables with more than two atomic sentences. But after I build this truth table, I will show you what the method is. It is not in the textbook what the method is for building, uh, assigning truth values to n different atomic sentences. It's very easy. Okay, we finished step two. We have assigned truth values to each of the atomic sentences. The next step is to determine the order in which you use the truth functions to build the compound sentence. And what you should try to find is the very last truth function you use to build the sentence. Given these parentheses, what in your view is the last truth function you use to build this sentence? Is it that? That's true. It's the horseshoe right here, which was the last truth function you used. So it will be the very last column you fill in because this column, under, the column underneath this truth function, gives us the truth value of the whole sentence. The columns underneath the other truth functions give us the truth values of those components of the compound sentence. So that is why we need to know the order in which we use truth functions to build the sentence. The earlier we use the truth function, the earlier that column gets filled in. Until we go up to the last, the latest truth function we use, and that's the last column that gets filled in. Since we know this is the last, we then look at what is to its left and what is to its right. Now, given we know that's the last thing, it doesn't matter if we fill in the truth values underneath the truth functions to its left first and then fill in the truth functions to its right next. Or if we fill in the truth functions to its right first, and then the truth functions to its left next. It doesn't matter. However, if we fill in what is to its the right of this horseshoe first or second, when we're in this component of the compound sentence, we must look at what we did first. Did we triple bar before we squiggle, or did we squiggle before we triple barred? Who says we triple barred and then squiggle? Who says we squiggled and then triple barred? That is correct. 
first we squiggle. Notice the triple bar occurred after the squiggling. And it doesn't matter if you squiggle to the left before you squiggle to the right, or if you squiggle to the right before you squiggle to the left. It doesn't matter. So let's squiggle to the, let's do this component with to the right of the horseshoe first. And let's squiggle to the left of the triple bar before we squiggle to the right. So you yell out, what is squiggle T? Squiggle F is? So we had to know the truth table definition of the squiggle to figure out what to put in this column. And this column tells us the truth value of squiggle A. And we'll do the same for squiggle B. Squiggle F is T. Squiggle T is F. Squiggle F is T. So now we are going to triple bar this column to that column. Because the triple bar connects squiggle A to squiggle B. And the truth value of squiggle A is in that column. And the truth value of squiggle B is in that column. So F triple bar F is F triple bar T is T triple bar F is and T triple bar T so this column tells us the truth value of this component of the width. Now let's look at the other component to the left of the horseshoe. And this we can simply read off of the truth table for the horseshoe. T horseshoe T is T horseshoe F. F horseshoe T. F horseshoe F. And this column tells us the truth value of the component A horseshoe B. And the, now we're almost finished. The last thing we need to do is to fill in the column underneath the horseshoe that gave us the entire width. And so we are horseshoeing that column to that column. And we can ask T horseshoe T is F horseshoe F is T horseshoe F is and T horseshoe T And we're finished building the truth table, and it is this column that tells us the truth value of the entire width, given the truth values that we assign to A and B. So you need to be careful to make sure you fill in the columns in the right order. And the way to do that is to determine what is the last truth function you used in building the sentence? And parentheses will generally give you the answer. The other thing to be careful about is when you fill in the columns underneath the atomic sentences, make sure that where you have a repeated atomic sentence, 
the same truth values go underneath it in every occurrence. And that's it. It's very easy to do. To program a computer to do this is a breeze. And it's very boring. So I can't say have fun with it. But you definitely need to know how to do this. So that's, that's good.